the monkey business illusion. Count how many times the players wearing white pass the ball. The correct answer is 16 passes. Did you spot the gorilla? For people who haven't seen or heard about a video like this before, about half missed the gorilla. If you knew about the gorilla, you probably saw it, but did you notice the curtain changing color or the player on the black team leaving the game? Let's rewind and watch it again. Here comes the gorilla, and there goes a player, and the curtain is changing from red to gold. When you're looking for a gorilla, you often miss other unexpected events. And that's the monkey business illusion. Learn more about this illusion and the original gorilla experiment at theinvisiblegorilla.com. So how many of you saw the gorilla? Oh, no, let's, let's do it the other way. See the gorilla. Okay. How many of you had no, known about this video beforehand? Yeah, the gorilla part of it. Yeah, so you guys don't count. Now and then, you know, I get someone who's seen it before and they still miss the damn gorilla. So that's pretty funny. <laughs> so, but, but of course, Simon, Dan Simon set this up because his original video got so popular, you know, virally popular, that everybody has seen the invisible gorilla. And so, you know, now he's showing you that while well, you think you're smart, you've been clued into how blind you are, and it turns out you're not any smarter than you were to begin with, right? So, how many people saw all three things that changed? Oh, you've seen it before. So, okay, and how many didn't? Yeah, okay, so the vast majority of you missed one or more of the things that changed. You know, and they're not really trivial things, like the disappearance of a person from six people, that's fairly major, and, you know, the whole background changed color, and you might think you'd clue into that, and so... So the weird thing is, even when you're primed to notice what you're supposed to notice, which is to say, count the balls, and you know that something weird is going to happen, you're not, that still doesn't prime you enough so that you can keep track of all the weird things that are happening. And like this was an absolutely staggering experiment when, when it was first shown. People, the psychologists were just like knocked over by it because the hypothesis up to that point had been always that, you know, you could concentrate on what you were concentrating on, but if something anomalous or unexpected happened, your attention would be automatically devoted towards it. And of course that's what people would think, right? You'd think that if you're watching people play basketball, and a gorilla walks into the, you know, area, and it's not small, that of course you'd be surprised and you'd see it. And it turns out that that's just wrong. And, you know, it, it tells you a lot about how your nervous system is set up. So you're focusing on counting the balls. And so for some reason, getting the correct answer to the question, how many times are the, is the ball thrown back and forth, turns out to be motivationally significant. Why? Like, wh why, why did you, you know, you got the instructions, fair enough, but why did you listen to them? Does it narrow your attention to the target? Oh, sure it does, but the question is, why did you even comply with the instructions? Because you wanted to get the answer right? Yeah, who said that? Because you wanted to get the answer right. Why did you care if you got the answer right? Well, think about it for a minute, like, guess. That means you're smart? It means you're smart. Yeah, that's right. So that's one possibility. It's like instantly you sort of interpret it as a little cognitive test, maybe, and then you want to see if you can do it. And, you know, so that taps into your hierarchy of values. Part of your value is I want to be maybe a smart and competent person, or I want to be at least as smart and competent as everyone else is playing this game. And so, you know, the instruction taps into a pre existent value structure, and then it's motivating. Okay, so, yeah. What, compliance as well, yes, that's another thing. It's like, that you know, the room in some ways is set up 
to ensure a degree of compliance, right? Because there's an, there's an implicit story in the room, which is if I'm at the front of it, and so that sort of makes me at the top of the dominance hierarchy, and the fact that you're here means you've already bought into that presupposition, and so it's a logical thing to do to play along with the game. So, yes? True, that, that's more like the playing a game issue, right? Is that, well, maybe something interesting will happen. Okay, right, right, right. Okay, so there's a variety of reasons why you might listen to the instructions. But the point is the instructions actually tap into your motivation, in your intrinsic motivation enough, so that you will, in fact, attempt to play the game. And then as soon as you play the game, what happens? Well, you focus your very limited attentional resources precisely on what it is that you're supposed to do.